According to legend, Hans Hagen, or someone with a similar name, was a Wehrmacht soldier who lost himself during the withdrawal of his army near the end of World War II and had to hide from the approaching Allied forces in a network of limestone mine tunnels in a region known as Czech America. The man dove into the shadows of the passageways, chiseled out of the rock massif of the Czech karst, fearing for his life since he was cut off from the outside world, without information, and stranded in a new country. His home and prison were then located in the tunnels that connected the quarries, what it must have been like to spend months on end hiding in a wet place, what he consumed, how he warmed himself when the cold arrived, and what he contemplated throughout the protracted insomniac nights. He had no chance of an agreeable future. The soldier led an unintentional hermit existence in the deepest recesses of the underworld, where it was dark, chilly, and rainy. As the years went by, Hagen's awareness gradually expanded to include the sorrow, loneliness, and quiet that surrounded him. Time and his surroundings vanished from his perspective. He assimilated into the shadows. The desperate soldier soon succumbed to a growing madness and started to despise every invader from the world that had always been closed to him. In the western section of the tunnel complex, close to the Little America Quarry, on the third floor was planned to be the unhappy man's residence. The Hagen Tunnel turns northwest from the main collection tunnel's corridor and runs between the Horseshoe and Rose Tunnels. It leads to a form of crossroads that is half-submerged. The so-called Hagen's Trust Tunnel, which previously connected the third floor with the second floor, makes a diagonal uphill curve from it to the left. This Trust Tunnel's end has caved in as of late. Although blind, the straight tunnel and the turn to the right are crucial to the legend. The old metal gong, which was once used by miners as a sound signaling device, hanging above the pond at the crossroads, however, is even more significant. Because it was said that no one who rang the gong at Hagen's tunnel emerged from the tunnel in good health. It was claimed that all it took to determine your fate was to ring the bell three times and dial Hagen. A swift and lethal attack by a crazy German soldier was to be launched at the daring from the passage that was immediately connected to Hagen's tunnel. It is stated that a doorway to another dimension can be found in a small tunnel that curves to the right. After the war, miners fled the western region of Czech America, which trampers later discovered. They were the ones who initially interpreted the Hagen tale. They might have been the invaders whose flashlights annoyed the beast that was hiding in the shadows. At the same time, however, their snuff boxes, backpacks, and backpacks inexplicably vanished from campfires overnight and turned into a crucial supply of clothing and food for Hagen. Perhaps the actual meaning of the eerie folklore was only understood by the tramps who immigrated to America immediately after the miners. It was enough for him to give birth to the terrifying specter of a mad soldier from almost nothing when the fires of the first settlements and camps burned at night at the bottom of the small, narrow quarries, when mystifying shadows flickered along the rock walls to the wistful sounds of guitars, and somewhere in the corner, a dark hole leading somewhere into the unknown underground, grinned. Similar to how little was required to replace a genuine physical human in lore with an astral ghost with considerably superior qualities, however, it's also possible that Hagen actually existed when insane, and was the victim of numerous people seeking romance, excitement, and a break from society. As they say, perhaps a man who had motives to conceal himself from society, and possibly from punishment, eventually acquired a reputation for inciting dread. He picked up how to bolster the myth, frighten the tourists below, and eventually transform into Hagen himself. This alleged heavy criminal, as he is frequently referred to, may have even discovered the genuine Hagen's bones hidden behind some sort of rock. She had a German pistol, bayonet, machine gun, and grenade, in addition to a Wehrmacht uniform. The man the skeleton belonged to appeared to have committed suicide after the cave-in trapped him in a dead-end hallway since there was a gunshot hole in her helmet. The criminal took the soldier's equipment and used it to more convincingly pass for Hagen. However, it's also plausible that he came up with the entire legend from scratch, or that it was only possible because of him. According to some versions of the narrative, Hagen worked with the Eastern Front prisoners of war in the mines in the early 1940s as a collaborator or a brutal overseer. He poisoned his family and ran into the tunnels out of fear of retaliation. Other versions claim that he attempted to bury the prisoners, 
witnesses to his cruelty, underground, but because he lacked accuracy, he only succeeded in burying himself. On the other side, it was also claimed that the Irish pilot of the downed American bomber was the man hiding from the Nazis in the Morn mine. He was trying to follow Patton from the tunnels to Pilsen when he was killed by a German battalion that was withdrawing. The version of the tale that claims the entire mythology was founded solely on a German bayonet with the name Hans Hagen inscribed on it that was discovered by the lake below the gong is probably the least appealing. A variation on this story claims that a shot through the head and a military bayonet were also discovered, possibly proving Hagen's suicide. Finding the bayonet has another variation, though. There was once a story about some friends sitting around a campfire. Two tramps went to fetch water in the pond below the gong, and one of them made the metal cylinder ring with a strong blow. However, to the great surprise and horror of both tramps, an oppressive, shrill, drawn-out roar and an approaching gasp suddenly sounded from the mysterious passage. The one who rang the bell thought it was just a bad joke by their friends, and decided to fearlessly wait at the gong for the pranksters running up. However, the second tramp couldn't take it mentally and ran out of the tunnels back to the fire. Strangely, none of the buddies were missing there, and when they cautiously ventured out to search for their still-missing comrade back to the gong, they only discovered a German bayonet on the bank of the blood-stained lake with an engraved, horrifying name. Since that time, nobody has ever seen their courageous partner. The gong that is currently hung in Hagen's hallway is just the Xth copy of the original signaling device. Surprisingly, the original one remained in existence. Inside the tunnel of the open-air museum at the Solvay Quarries, they take care of him. Anyone who dares to call Hagen these days will go to the flooded intersection of corridors, which was once thought to be the most dangerous route for a lunatic or his ghost. The legend endures anyway, if you walk through the underground tunnels of Czech America. You still feel a tiny shiver run up and down your back. Even now, he is still being discussed, written about, and created. Even a notebook that acts as a kind of summit book for people who have visited the fabled tunnel occasionally appears above the pond close to the gong. However, because this book is such a priceless memento, it never stays anywhere for very long.